All right, ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to talk about subtone. So what is a subtone? What is that foo-foo sound? You may have often heard people refer to it as a foo-foo sound. All a subtone really is, is just the sound that you get when a greater percentage of air is flowing through the mouthpiece. For this video, I'm going to use my Autolink Super Tone Master. This is a seven tip opening. I'm going to use Van Dorn uh, Red Box two and a half reeds. We have air that flows through, and we have a membrane that we call a reed that oscillates up and down, and it greatly determines how much air we can flow through the mouthpiece. Now, if I can find a way to cheat to allow more air to slip through, I can get a more airy sound. <laughs> Okay, to start with a subtone, you might think you want to start on your low B flat, but we're not going to do that. We're going to actually start this on a low F. Regardless of what saxophone you have, start on a low F. It's going to be a lot easier to manipulate the straight tone versus the subtone, like this. First thing you're going to notice is that with the subtone, the pitch is going to be flat. By using a lot less embouchure pressure, we're gonna wind up dropping the pitch. So you need to adjust your intonation if you decide to use a subtone frequently throughout your playing. I mostly play with a very relaxed embouchure anyway, so my tuning is adjusted as such. This is a big deal. You gotta be careful about the pitch when you're using a subtone. All the altissimo stuff that I've been teaching, if you've been following along with my channel, feel free to subscribe if you haven't. Hit that like. I'm always talking about using a relaxed embouchure. And to facilitate being able to play altissimo, using this relaxed embouchure really, really helps because you're not constricting the way the reed can oscillate. Doing so, you lower the pitch, so you need to basically just push in and make sure that you are very, very particular about your pitch, especially when you're just getting started. Using a subtone or generally using a lip out or even a more relaxed embouchure is going to force you to have to learn to develop the muscles that you haven't learned to develop before. And the short story, it's gonna take you around two months if you fully commit two months. And if you're gonna start using a lip out much more relaxed embouchure, subtone, you're gonna need to lower the tip opening of the mouthpiece. Find the lowest tip opening mouthpiece that you have, get that thing, and then get cracking. What you wanna do with that mouthpiece is then adjust the strengths of the reed. Start with whatever reeds that you're already using, and then we just wanna fluctuate there, making sure that we have a low tip opening mouthpiece. If you just start trying to do this with the mouthpiece that you're having, you're gonna run into all kinds of problems. You're just gonna keep going back to a much tighter embouchure. It's gonna limit your ability to manipulate the subtone, which is in fact our ability to flow more air within a given unit of time through the mouthpiece. In other words, airspeed. All we're really doing is just opening the tip of the mouthpiece. Greater tip opening mouthpiece, we can flow more air. The reed has a much larger way to travel, allowing us to push more air through. Okay, so we're gonna start 
on our low F. All I'm doing is just manipulating the pressure that I'm pushing onto the reed. When I think about playing a subtone, I'm really thinking about pulling the reed down. If this is around the normal place that I put my embouchure, I'm thinking of relaxing and more forward. Relax and forward. You can think of it more like a 45 degree angle from the ground and to the mouthpiece. Just more forward and relaxed. So go back and forth between the straight tone low F and the subtone low F. Subtone, 45 degree angle, straight tone, right on it as you normally would. Sounds like this. <laughs> piece that you decide to use for something like this is definitely going to play a huge role and how easily it will be for you to do this. Generally, a high baffle mouthpiece is just going to give you a much more edgy sound, making it less noticeable. I prefer some bright, powerful mouthpieces that still allow me to be able to subtone very well. I like being able to contrast a really bright, powerful thing with a nice subtle subtone. Uh, this auto link, this is just your regular standard run of the mill auto link. I haven't even done any adjustments to this mouthpiece at all, which I need to, but that's a different story. <laughs> but um, yeah, and the Van Dorn Red Box two and a half reads. This is a very, very middle of the road kind of setup. So this is where you want to start. So if you have a high baffle mouthpiece, put that one aside first. And then just go to your whatever your most generic mouthpiece is and it'll give you a much easier time with learning how to do this. First thing you want to do, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do this on our low F, is just blow air through the saxophone without sounding the pitch like this. Already you're using the most relaxed embouchure. Now you want to just slightly increase the embouchure pressure, just enough to get a note to start to produce. Again, we're going to do this on our low F, whatever low F is on whatever saxophone. This is Barry or Alto, just your low F. That's generally where we want to start to learn to do this. Two things are going to happen. The pitch is going to be flat and also the volume is going to be really low. Ideally, you want to be able to start to do this in the upper range of the saxophone. This is how I play altissimo. With all the altissimo stuff that you hear me do, I'm thinking about subtoning up there. The difference in the sound, the higher you go up, becomes much, much more subtle and it becomes much more of an embouchure thing because that's what we want to focus on, being able to get a big sound with a relaxed embouchure. Okay. From low F, then you want to go down to low E, low D, C, and low B flat. And keep in mind, it is entirely possible to overdo it. Ultimately, you're going to have to be the one to decide whether there's just too much air in the sound or not. Okay, once we start to get a good hold on the low end of the saxophone with the subtone, we want to start working our way up, being able to manipulate our embouchure, because this is what it's all about. It's all about embouchure and air, embouchure pressure and air pressure. Okay, so let's start on a G and a G sharp, regardless of what saxophone you play those notes start to become really unstable. So we want to start working our way up. Let's start on a high G and let's hear what happens. G sharp. Okay, 
with those multiphonics that are produced, all those little like grit, grungy notes, what we're doing is increasing the amplitude of all the harmonics that are within any particular note. What does that mean? <laughs> that means that anytime you play a single note on a saxophone, you're actually sounding a whole bunch of other pitches. Being able to manipulate our embouchure allows for those other pitches to have a greater volume. So you probably just heard me say something very special. You're being able to increase the volume of those upper harmonics is what altissimo is. Increase the volume of the upper harmonics, decrease the volume of the lower ones. That's how you get altissimo. I mean, it's what altissimo is. That's how you start working your way up. Everything that I do with altissimo is all about being able to manipulate embouchure pressure. Being able to manipulate embouchure pressure, I can increase the tip opening of the mouthpiece, allowing me to be able to flow more air through the mouthpiece. It's ultimately just giving me control over parts of the note that are being produced that I can't even hear when I'm just playing the saxophone the regular way. So through a subtone, you can actually learn altissimo. Learning to manipulate the bottom of the saxophone gives you great facility in the highest notes on the saxophone because you've learned to develop your embouchure. That's all subtone is. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's all I got for you. So stay tuned. Got some great stuff coming up for you guys. All right. See ya.